Hey folks, Phil Davis, Ancestry Lands, AncestryLands.com, coming to you with another video. Um, you may have seen some of my other videos talking about your network, equaling your network. And today we're going to focus on something a tad bit different. We're going to talk about do you have what it takes to make the journey on that long road to success? When I say that, I'm asking you a question of evaluating what you have on the inside, okay? When I say on the inside is that if you're a person who is going to do anything in life that's worth doing, whether that's going to school and getting a degree, you may be the only one in your family that's graduated high school, you may be trying to you know, go professional in a sport, you may have hopes or dreams or aspirations that you believe in that you want to achieve, but not everyone around you is on on that same page. Not everyone is able to achieve what you're able to achieve or even dream what you're able to dream. So when I ask, do you have what it takes to take that journey onto that road of success? You have to realize that a lot of times when you see people on YouTube and the the videos of people in Ferraris and cars, even a person such as myself having, you know, over 100 properties that I've either owned um, and passed off into new ownership, it takes a certain inner strength, inner courage, um, an inner obsession or possession that you have to be fixated on that journey and that journey that you take towards the top of whatever you aspire, nine times out of 10, you're gonna find yourself alone on the road. I made other references to my other videos, how when I first started Ancestry Lands or the concept of Ancestry Lands, it, before Ancestry Lands was even a title, Ancestry Lands was just land ownership, right? It was just me starting to build a way to own land, to, to sell and make a little extra money coming in. Uh, on the side to help support my family. Well, when you, I looked around to see who else was excited about the idea as I was, no one was. Uh, no one was excited about, about the amount of investment it took, the education, the learning process that it's gonna take. It, it took about 12 weeks to learn the process. Every day I had to study a little bit more, research a little bit more. And one of the bigger issues nowadays is that we want it quickly. We want success to come and drop right out of the sky, fall right into our hand at a nice soft pace, a soft little feel. And we want that to be how the success is delivered. Well, traditionally success has never come that way. You may have some outliers, some examples of people who've gotten successful very quickly, but you gotta realize that that is not the average route of success. In fact, I don't even strive for that route of success because again, are you looking for what's success now or do you wanna be successful throughout your lifetime? There's a difference. So I, I ask you now, even if you're a young person watching this video, Okay, so it, you're, you're, you're 20 now. Well, I'm 41. When I was 20, I had hair, believe it or not. Uh, curly hair, you know, I didn't have grays in my beard. I also didn't have the wisdom or knowledge that I have now through my life experiences. But as time goes on, you age. You're not as young as you were before. You're not as spry. You're not as, um, you know, vibrant. You, your life tends to throw more things onto you as you're trying to go on that road, you get a little heavier in your journey. Your steps are not as fast. Your run is not as strong. You don't have the same endurance and your life becomes, that there's more weight, you know, metaphorically weight that's put on, that slows down your pace on your journey in life. Part of what I'm, in, I'm, I'm trying to pose the question of is not to discourage you away from that journey, but get your mindset into the fact that what it takes to succeed, what it takes for you to accomplish what you desire in your journey is relatively only going to be decided by you. In order to, to succeed, you have to be able to travel the road where others won't. You've got to be able to stay up a little bit later. You've got to get up earlier. 
Um, I see people all the time reference, you know, oh, you know, millionaires read 52 books and or, or, or 42 books in a year. Um, I, I try to always read at least a book um, every other month or, you know, two, three books a year. And then I build on that. But, you know, you always hear these the, the same old cliche roundabout talk, you know. So if you read 52 books, I guess you're going to end up being a millionaire. But that's not really the truth of it, is it? Millionaires and people in that ilk, that that cat, that that pedigree, they're reading books to expand their education. They're doing research. They're looking for knowledge and seeking out extra information that adds to their growing knowledge or their growing mindset. That foundation they expand and expand and expand it, so that way they can build skills marketable skills whether that be improvement um whether that be how to speak better uh whether that's on just how to education but their goal at reading these books is to gain knowledge to apply and that's something that's always missing talking about what you need to do in your journey when you're starting a journey the first thing you need to do is really understand your capabilities and limitations Limitations and what are your resources, whether that be financial, um, support systems, uh, who do you go to, who are your mentors or coaches for you that can give you input on how to advance your journey. People who are on that path, these are footsteps in front of you or others who've gone down similar roads to success that can actually talk to you or relate to you about how lonely this journey is going to be. It's not lonely in the sense of, um, you know, you're, you're never going to have anyone or anything else like that. It's more of a loneliness in that people will always come to congratulate you when you cross the finish line, but no one runs with you while you're running the race. That's the loneliness that I'm talking about. You know, I always go back to the same boat, you know, he might, he's running the race, even though he's running other people, but he's running the race alone, realistically. I mean, he's, he has to beat his time if he's to set a new record and when he sprints all right the in order for you to do better or get to that you have to go further in your own journey that you've been in in life in order to get to the end of the journey to the finish line um, i find it you know all the time like my father you might see in the other videos um, when we went to Linvilla or orchards and we talked about the multiple ways to make money off of owning land and growing crops um there in that experience you know i did i pulled my father aside we had a few days to talk as he came up here to visit us before we have our third child and i asked my dad i said hey dad did you ever expect me to be where i'm at in life you know how as a father now that i'm 41 he's 63 how do you i've been on this journey for a while i've got a nursing degree i started a business in land and he, he told me, he said, you know, the one thing I never, I was shocked by and I never expected if, you know, he had to go back 20, 30 years ago and say, what is my son going to do in his life? He never would expect me to have this land business, to have Ancestry Lands, the YouTube channel, the IG, the Twitter, the, the, the business that I've developed. He never expected that. And again, that journey that I took to do something that my father never expected me to do. Did he expect me to go to college and get a degree? Absolutely. Did he expect my brother to go to college and become a teacher? Absolutely. Um, did he expect us to do well in sports? We play football, ran track? Absolutely. But he didn't expect me to do this land business that I'm doing and not only do it, but be successful at it to, to actually have an impact on the community. So I'm asking you to ask yourself, are you going to do something that's unexpected in life? Like actually take the path on your journey to actually finish the journey. I'm not even done yet. So one of the things I took away from that conversation with my father was that I not only did something outside the realm of what he thought was possible or even conceivable, I become successful at it to where now he's in the land videos in La Villa Orchards with us and we're talking about land concepts you know, growing crops. And he's a part of this legacy that my children will grow up and see, man, I don't even remember this day spending with grandpa, but he's in the video and he's handing me a tomato and talking about the benefits of land. 
So we just created a generational experience from my father who had never gone picking for any fruit. He, he never picked any crops. He never was experienced at six, three years old. This is a man who's taken me to many countries as I've been a child, um, you know, has always taught me to expand my borders, expand my mindset. And at 63, I'm able to, sh to do show him something through my land, my, my land journey that he's never done before in 63 years. He ate a tomato that he picked himself. Now that's just an experience. He was doing this with his grandchildren who he's doing at 63. My son's doing this at six. <laughs> my daughter's doing this at eight years old. My wife's doing it pregnant with my unborn child. We're, we're having this experience here all together in a generational capacity. My father, myself, the, the new father, and my son and my daughter. This is a generational legacy experience. But in order to get here, to get to the point where you can watch this video, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe because we're, we're, I'm, I'm hitting home on something that relates to every person, young, uh, you know, middle-aged and older, is that it's never too late to start that journey, all right? The only time it's too late is when you close your eyes and they don't open again. But again, I'm asking you the same question is that, do you have what it takes to start this journey, to get on that path and walk and realize that when we were at that point making that video, in order, that's the end, that's my finish line. When you saw the video of my father, my children, the children with granddad were picking fruit, Asian pears and peaches and nectarines and uh, with tomatoes. My wife made a salsa later that day. That's the finish line where everyone gets to see the relation to land, you know, from that journey that I started. But it was, I, I, I had surgery, hernia surgery, where the, the next morning I was up doing my land craft, doing my land business, developing it to where I, it can be today. And, and here's the other part about it is when you have the courage to take that journey. When I started out learning about land and trying to buy my first property and own it, it was only to have the first, the sensation of just owning a piece of land or real estate. Um, it, it, it was the concept of just getting to that one step. And that was the finish line for me. Wow, I own a piece of property. I can't believe it. Hey, my, I told my wife, hey, we own a piece of property. And then from there, you, once you get to that first step, that first achievement on that journey, the journey starts to take a different form. Because when I got the second property, third property, fourth property, fifth property, it became like, wow, um, I'm now able to build this outcome you know you might say it's a dream of supporting my family with this land land income right this passive income i'm building so there wasn't a thought of this youtube channel you watching this video now me talking about my experience my wisdom my knowledge to inspire you to start that journey start to learn these lessons of what i'm talking about of being on the road to success what it takes all right. A lot of people will tell you, oh, you know, I'm not showing you a Lamborghini. I'm talking about what was in my mind the days I got to this point to be in front of you on YouTube. And it, it didn't come because, you know, I, I took the millionaire advice and I read the books and I read I did all of this. What what did it was the work, the understanding, the learning and then the application. That's what that's what it took for me to actually start being successful because then the journey from owning multiple properties became like wow we've got a 40 acre property now i being an african-american man the thought of you know we're supposed to be owed 40 acres in a mule and i'm not going to make this about you know anything back in time but i i always remember growing up in the south and and virginia my parents have been from they're from virginia we, i was born in virginia and you know always talking about 40 acres in a mule and the one thing I've seen is that culturally is that we tend to get handed a lot of things that don't necessarily make us better. And the same way we get handed things in my culture is the same things that get taken away from us because they were handed to us. You know, we used to work and and and, and pretty much um, acquire the things that we had in our lives because we had pride in our culture and i'm not i'm not disparaging <coughs> excuse me where we are now it's just that the, the the leaders of the world have looked at us as people who are only deserving 
and handouts. And what I'm saying is to inspire people is that when I got the 40 acre property on my own and I said, wow, I own 40 acres. This is just one property. I hit a cultural land uh, milestone for myself that I finally got my 40 acre and a mule. Well, I don't have the mule, but I got the 40 acres. You see what I'm, I'm trying to say is that I, it came by me doing starting this journey with one small step, which was just to learn and understand and start owning a property. And then I got a 40 acre and I said, man, this is crazy. Now I see a lot of my other you know, people in my industry, they have, you know, 120 acres there. But for me as an African-American man, getting 40 acres that I bought through starting my business two to three years into my business, it was a, it was something deep inside of me, a spiritual victory that I said, wow, I never needed a handout. And I think I got it during the pandemic time. I never got, I, I got, I never needed a handout to get what was rightfully deserving that my people have fought for to get they fought a war to make this country what it was to get 40 acres was never done so in my less than 40 years i got something that took hundreds of years that we still haven't got and what i'm saying is that if i'm waiting on a higher you know entity the the, the, the government some other source to bring give me the wealth the passive income I'm never going to get it. You're never going to get it. The only way I got it was when I put foot in boot and started walking, started making sure I understood my heading. And on that journey, no matter who I didn't see around me, um, I made sure I got to where I was going to be where I now own a 40 acre property. And then that 40 acre property, I ended up selling to another person of color who is now making payments on that 40 acre property. And we did it so that way he could afford making those payments. And I have a source of income while he's making those payments. And it's a great deal for both of us. Now that's building wealth. It's not, it's not just me, my 40 acre story. It already is when I got it, it already went in the hands of another client who he has dreams for what he wants to do to 40 acres. He has something that he wants to build. His journey has started towards his goal of land ownership. He's bought five acre property from me before. He's got a couple smaller properties, but then he set his sights bigger because what came by way of knowing me was the 40 acres. Then he's like, no, I want that too. Not, not, not instead of that also. So now he's, his journeys evolved just like mine. But that came because I started my journey and that opened up. You'll get we'll find that on your road in your journey. You'll find other roads, people who are taking the same journey that cross where yours are. They intersect or they run parallel. They're running right alongside of yours. But on your journey, you're going to meet others that are going to be on your team of people who are on the same journey, seeking the same finish line that you are seeking in life. And that's the most powerful thing. So when I ask you, do you have what it takes? If you if you saw the outcome of what you were going to accomplish in life, you would walk faster towards that on that journey, right? But what happens when you don't see the end, all right, of what you look to accomplish? You tend to be, you can't let yourself start and somewhere along the lines, you can get thrown off the journey, right? Because what happens is, is that there's always unsurety. That's the test, the part that you can't see. So I always say the same thing I've, I've said that's made me successful is that do things with the end in mind. Do things with your goal in mind. Visualize your success being someplace where you have to get to. It's already there. And keep in mind, you may be more successful than what you envision in your mind if you keep walking and stay on that journey towards your goal you will cross that finish line and there may be more people waiting there for you at the end but again you got to know that the steps you take will be your own so i hope this 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 conversation this inspiration of understanding be proud of being on the journey 
and be proud of the fact that you're doing it alone. When I say that is that, again, the journey is yours to take. We, the only time you can not do the journey anymore is when your eyes close. We said that again. And make sure that you understand that being on the journey, that's part of it. There's that That's your journey. That you should be happy that you're on this journey and you're walking it. And there's, a, there's people waiting at the finish line for you. There's people waiting to celebrate your success. Failure and doubt, that's part of it. So if you're experiencing that, that that doubt or even a failure i failed i failed in this land business not failed at owning land but i failed at sometimes understanding or i took hits or i didn't make as much profit on certain sales certain properties that i wanted to i've had to sell properties for a little cheaper because something came up um and and those are failures small failures but they gave me greater knowledge that become that became a greater victory um, overall that that they made me more successful but I didn't let that discourage me to say hey um, you know I'm gonna quit or I'm not gonna do this you know like they said the fear-based mindset I don't think I, I think it's a difference between being fear-based and being you know pragmatic or caution based because caution is very good that it's a good instinct that we all have to keep us alive in life but fear is just you 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 just you just advert you just anytime you see it you're going away from it it's just fear being you know fully scared and that's not how you lead in this journey of life you should be cautious but optimistic cautious but still moving forward keep your wits about and keep your eyes open to make sure that you're still on the path and paying attention to your journey so I hope this has enlightened you folks. Stay tuned, like this video, share, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment below and tell me about what you think of this video, what you think about the journey that you have to take. Tell us what your journey may be. Tell us what you aspire or aspire to do in your life. Tell us what your goals are because the people who are watching this video, the people who are on this channel, they're, they're learning not just land. They're learning the mindset. They're learning that what they want to accomplish in life, they're not alone. They're learning that I too believe in the people who are watching this video and I do try to share with them some experiences that they can relate to, that they can understand that I'm not anything special. But if you do the things that I'm saying, you will more than likely be successful in your life, be at the finish line with a crowd of people there to celebrate your victory. All right, but the journey, that path, you'll be alone and you should be happy with it because guess who can never take that anything away from you after you cross that line, right? No one can, only you. If you decide to stop, turn around, quit, go back or doubt and stop moving at all or there's no more there, there's no more days for you to take that journey but again what's worse is a person who looks back and wish and regret that or regrets that they never took that journey at all but it's ra i rather you try and fail than fail to try and that's all for today folks Phil Davis, Ancestry Lands, AncestryLands.com. Hey, our YouTube channel is growing, folks. I don't know if you see it, but we're growing. People are paying attention, and so should you. All right? Make sure you go on our AncestryLands.com. Look for a property. Look for a way to build your wealth. No interest, no credit checks. I'm Phil Davis. I help blue-collar families own real estate without any credit checks, interest, or the money they have in the bank. That doesn't matter, folks. We're going to make it possible for you. Like, share, subscribe, folks. Take care. Phil Davis, and I'm out. Are you confused with today's real estate market? With high interest rates and overpriced housing, it can be hard to find something to own at the right price. Available on Amazon, Getting Dollars from Dirt by author Philip H. Davis is a game-changing book that invites you to embark on a thrilling exploration of this often overlooked asset class. This book is your roadmap to unlocking the secrets of vacant land investment. Inside these pages, you'll uncover the transformative power of vacant land as a wealth building tool. Discover how to spot promising properties, assess their true value, and capitalize on market trends. From understanding zoning and permits to leveraging financing strategies, you'll gain the knowledge and confidence to make savvy investment decisions. With each page you turn, you'll gain a deeper understanding of the profound impact your investments can have on the world around you. Getting dollars from dirt is not just a guidebook, it's a call to action. 
Whether you're a seasoned investor or a curious novice, this book will empower you to tap into the immense potential of vacant land and embark on a journey toward financial freedom and a brighter future.